In this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can find the exact value for the cosine of 75 degrees, and I'm going to take you through two different processes, each of which seemingly gives you different answers, but then at the end of the video I'll show you that those two answers are actually the same number but just different forms. Okay, so first of all, we're going to be using the sum identity for cosine. And so we need two angles that are nice to work with when we use this expansion, uh, but they need to add up to 75 degrees. So it seems like it would be really good to use 45 degrees and 30 degrees because we know both the sine and cosine for 30 and 45 degree angles and 45 and 30 also add up to 75 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this expansion for the sum identity for cosine. So we'll be doing the cosine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees. And we're going to subtract from that the sine of 45 degrees times the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, so now it's just time to get some values and simplify this expression see what we have. So the cosine of 45 will be the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 will be the square root of 3 over 2. And from that we're going to subtract, and we have this product, the sine of 45, which is the square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of 30, which is 1 half. So it looks like our denominators are both 2 times 2 and 2 times 2, so we know it's going to be over 4. And our numerators look like the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2. So in this first example, we see that the exact value for the cosine of 75 degrees can be given by the uh, expression here, the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2, all over 4. In this second approach, we're still going to be looking for the exact value of the cosine of 75 degrees, but instead of using the sum identity for cosine like we just got done doing, this time let's go ahead and take a look at using the half angle identity for cosine. Alright, so we have the cosine of some angle A, and we're going to cut that in half, and that's going to equal, and we have this formula here, plus or minus, and then this square root expression. Notice this square root expression includes a cosine A, which this A will be this value here. Okay, so if we're looking for 75 degrees, we need A over 2 to be the 75 degrees which means in our case, A is going to be 150 degrees, because of course, half of 150 makes that 75. Okay, so how about this plus or minus business now? Well, we're looking for the cosine of 75 degrees, and we know that 75 degrees resides in the first quadrant, and cosine is positive in the first quadrant. So I'll be taking the plus and ignoring the minus in this formula. Okay, so now, what we're doing, we're going to find the cosine of 75, and it's going to be the square root of 1 plus the cosine of our 150 degrees, all over 2. Okay. So what is, first of all, the cosine of 150 degrees? Well, it's going to be a negative radical 3 over 2. And so now it looks like we have this expression. So it's time to simplify this as much as possible. Okay, so we have plus a negative, so we can just say it's going to be 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2. All that, of course, is over 2. So we can get common denominators up here. This 1 will become 2 over 2. So we'll have 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2. And of course, all of that is over this 2 in the denominator, so it looks like we have that expression right there. And taking this one step further, in the denominator, there's really 2, but 2 over 1. So if we divide here, we're really multiplying by the reciprocal. So this guy gets brought up here. And so we have now the square root of, we have that 2 minus radical 3 all over 4. Okay, let's continue our process. So let's go ahead and break up this radical expression. Instead of having this entire fraction underneath it, let's call it the square root of 2 minus radical 3 over the square root of 4. And that's nice, of course, because the square root of 4 comes out to be, well, just 2. Okay, so here we have 
another expression that is the exact value for the cosine of 75 degrees. But if you'll remember from our first process when we did this, this is definitely not what the answer looked like that we got. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two answers side by side and see if they are indeed the same. So here we have our two exact values for the cosine of 75. The one here that we got using the sum identity for cosine and the one here that we got by using our half identity for cosine. Obviously when you look at these they have some similarities but they look actually pretty different from one another. So how could they both be the exact value for the cosine of 75? Well, we're going to go ahead and work through this process just like we would to verify a trigonometric identity. We're going to work one side of this equation and manipulate it and make it look like the other side. So I'm going to start and I'm going to manipulate the right side of this and I'm going to use just some numeric manipulations and when I'm done, I'm going to have this expression here that's on the left and in that manner, I'm showing that yes, indeed, they are the same. Okay, so first of all, let's look at these denominators. This guy's a 4 and this guy's a 2. Obviously, that's not the same to begin with. So I'm going to start by multiplying this expression on the right by 2 over 2 to force these denominators to be the same. So when I do that, I have 2 times, and then we have that radical expression all over 4. Okay, so 4 and 4, good to go. So this 2 right here, really, I could say that's the square root of 4. And what I'm going to be able to do is go ahead and multiply these two radicands together. So I'm going to say I have the square root of 4 times and then 2 minus radical 3 all over 4. And of course, that's going to give me the square root of 8 minus 4 radical 3 over 4. Alright, so I'm going to do a little something here. I'm going to split this up. Instead of having two terms, I'm going to split it up into four terms. And it's going to look like, well, the 8 is going to turn into a 6 plus 2. And the negative 4 radical 3 is going to be minus 2 radical 3 minus 2 radical 3. And all of that, of course, is under a radical, which is all over this denominator of 4. Okay, why might I do that? Well, I'm going to reorder these, the two middle terms here, in an effort to make something that looks like I can factor it. And I'll show you what that's going to look like here in a moment. Okay. So, you know, in order to get rid of a radical, you need to be taking the square root of, well, a perfect square, so then the square root and the perfect square can cancel out. So let's go ahead and consider factoring and uh, grouping these terms together this way, these first two and these last two together. And from these first pair, let's go ahead and factor out the square root of 6. So what I have left over will be the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2, and this is the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is this real 6. And then the square root of 6 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 12, which does reduce to this. Okay, so we're good. And then out of the second pair, let's go ahead and take a negative radical 2. And when I do that, I'll have a negative radical 2 and then plus a radical 6. Okay, all of that is under that radical, which is all over 4. Okay. This doesn't really look like it uh, did much, except make it a little messier. But what I can do now is I see that I have radical 6 minus radical 2 here, and radical 6 minus radical 2 here. So let's go ahead and factor that out. And my leftovers, in fact, are radical 6 minus radical 2. Okay, well that's not too bad at all, because what that does for me is, yes indeed, gives me this perfect square under the radical. So, when the square root and the perfect square cancel, I have the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. And if you remember, yeah, that's exactly where we are heading. So the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. So we have gone through this process of starting with seemingly not 
equal expressions, but they were equal. And we went ahead and did some numeric manipulation step by step and just showed that the one was indeed equal to the other. And so both of these will be exact values for the cosine of 75 degrees.